Thank you. I don't know if that was for me or for uh, the good senator, but uh, it was for me. I, I appreciate it very much. Now, if you want to clap for uh, the senator, go right ahead. <laughs> Well, let me begin by saying thank you for coming out tonight uh, to uh, the Senator's Town Hall meeting. Of course, this meeting is going to be on health care, so we want to make sure that uh, you get an opportunity to ask your questions. And, and um, when you ask your question, the Senator, of course, will respond to that question. And I'm sure there are some that are going to be for and against, and everybody wants to express their, uh, their opinion one way or the other. What we would ask you to do tonight is that you would be respectful of one another. It's all right to be passionate, it's all right to be fiery, but let's also be respectful of each other so that um, we don't uh, find ourselves in, in a situation that uh, is not uh, conducive to this setting tonight. Once again, we appreciate the, the good senator taking his time to come out and be a part of this town hall meeting and share with us um, the health reform bill that's currently, I guess, in the conference committee, I, I take it. So I'm going to relinquish my stand and allow Senator John Henson to come at this time and just give a small presentation and then we'll fill your questions. Senator Henson. Well, thanks, Maurice, and uh, I appreciate your service uh, to our state. Uh, Maurice, a long time member of the legislature and, and really did a great job. I'm going to start tonight, try to keep it fairly brief. Uh, tell you some about the, the health care bill that was passed uh, in the Senate. Uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes also talking uh, because I have, I did vote against the bill and tell you why, uh, you know, some of the things that I'm against in the bill. But I don't think, because I do believe in health care reform, I believe we need to do health care reform, uh, I think it's important that I tell you what I'm for. And uh, not just what I'm against, but, but also uh, what I'm for. And if you, we've already received quite a few of your questions. Um, that have been written out and submitted, but if you, you know, during, if you want to um, write down other questions. And the only reason we're having them written down, you're actually going to be able to ask the question yourself. We're going to call on you when you do. Well, we just didn't want, we just didn't want the same question asked like, you know, 22 times or the same comment made 22 times. So we wanted to try to get as many different aspects of, of healthcare questions asked or comments. Comments are okay tonight. If you want to, you know, God gave me two ears and one mouth, and so I'm supposed to listen, what, twice as much as I talk. So um, he wants us, he, you know, I, I think it's really important. I've gotten some great ideas from doing town hall meetings over the years. Um, this is the first live town hall meeting that I've done on health care, but I've done over 20 telephone town hall meetings on health care. And the, the telephone town hall meetings, we've actually, we average about 4,000 madams on the phone calls. And, uh, and we call about 50,000 homes each time that we call. So we've called, hopefully all of you have hopefully gotten some kind of a call, maybe you're, we're home or whatever, but uh, the, the, I've, we've had a lot of great feedback and good suggestions uh, on, the, uh, on the telephone town hall meetings. So with that, let me just get right into um, this bill. Hopefully I'm not too technologically challenged, uh, but at this point, first of all, the, this Senate health reform bill uh, that passed, as you can see there, it, it passed um, on strictly partisan lines. It passed 60 to 39. Uh, every there was one Republican who uh, uh, who did not vote. He left a little early to be home with his family uh, for Christmas Eve because we actually voted on this bill on Christmas Eve. Um, it's more than 2,700 pages. This is actually the first bill. This is without the amendments. There's another about seven, almost 600 and some pages that was added. This is our copy, the working copy of the Senate bill. Uh, this is double-sided and a lot of legal language. And uh, folks have asked, you know, hey, did you read it before you voted on it? Well, I can tell you, I studied a lot of the bill. I'm not sure if you're a healthcare lawyer, if you can actually read it and understand every aspect of that bill. It's unbelievably, you know, complicated. That's that's one of the reasons that we don't know, even if you spent a year studying that bill, you'd learn something new almost every day because of the complexity of the bill. It's a massive expansion of the federal government into our healthcare system. There are 1,697 times in the bill where it actually gives the Secretary of Health and Human Services, that's the federal government, gives her authority to create, determine, or define healthcare policy. Almost 1,700 new times in this bill it gives the Secretary of Human, Health and Human Services 
the ability to create, determine, or define healthcare policy. Um, the total cost, the true cost, if you score it from when everything's implemented and all the taxes, cuts, everything together, it's about two and a half trillion dollars. The, um, in that, there's $500 billion in new taxes. Of those, by the way, uh, the vast majority of those new taxes are paid by people making less than $250,000 a year. It's basically the middle class. Um, the, really, most of the taxes are even pe paid by people making less than $100,000 a year. Um, about a $500 billion cut in Medicare. We'll go into the exact details of that in just a second. Uh, the National Federation of Independent Businesses estimates that about 1.6 million jobs will be lost over the next four years uh, from small businesses because of this bill. The National Federation of Independent Businesses is the largest group in Washington that represents small businesses. Uh, that's their number. Uh, and it's, this is a huge unfunded mandate on the state. Democrat governor of Tennessee uh, said this is the mother of all unfunded mandates uh, that's ever been seen. This is also, see here? Maybe you could advance it. <laughs> there we go. Um, as far as the <clears throat> Medicare cuts, how, how many seniors are on Medicare Advantage? Okay. We have about a third of the seniors in Nevada who are on Medicare, actually in what's called Medicare Advantage. It's, it, it was a new program that was created uh, that the, uh, a lot of seniors really like because it, it gives them not only regular traditional Medicare, but prescription drugs um, it, and kind of first dollar coverage, vision coverage, dental coverage. Uh, some of the plans even offer health, health memberships and things like that for preventative you know, types of things. And, and most of them, uh, most of them, uh, the seniors, there's about a 90% satisfaction rate with Medicare Advantage. This bill cuts $120 billion uh, from Medicare Advantage. And that will mean a direct cut in benefits, about 64% of extra Medicare benefits from Medicare Advantage patients will be cut over the next five years according to the Congressional Budget Office. Um, there's a $135 billion cut in hospitals, $40 billion cut in home health. This is all from Medicare program. $15 billion cuts in nursing homes, and $8 billion cut from hospices. These are some of the new taxes. Um, these are just, these aren't all the new taxes that are in the bill, but these are just some of them. If you've heard about uh, the, the unions went up uh, to talk with the president yesterday, uh, all the, the heads of the largest unions, and this 40% insurance plan tax, that's what they were complaining about. This is the so-called tax on Cadillac plans. The problem with it is, is that this tax on so-called Cadillac plans is not indexed for, medi for medical inflation. It's just indexed for regular inflation plus 1%. So over the years, almost all healthcare policies will be subject to this new 40% tax. Well, there's a separate insurance tax. There's a separate employer tax. There's a drug tax, there's a lab tax, there's a medical device tax, there's a failure to buy insurance tax, there's a tanning service tax, for those of you who like to go to tanning beds. Uh, and there's an increased employee Medicare tax uh, as well in the bill. Now, I don't know, and th this was an interesting question. When you go to the grocery store and you pay a sales tax, does the business pay the tax or do you pay the tax? You pay the tax. Guess who pays these taxes? Okay? Drug tax, you're going to pay. Lab tax, you're going to pay. We pay these taxes. Businesses pass taxes on to consumers. These are some of the, pr uh, some of the uh, promises that President Obama has made about this health insurance bill. He said, nothing in this plan will require you or your employer to change the coverage or the doctor you have and he said, let me repeat this. And this was in September of 09. Nothing in our plan requires you to change what you have. In fact, independent experts say that the Senate passed bill will force literally tens of millions of American families and seniors off of